Machine guns are by design crew-served weapons. Machine gun crews range in size from five to two-man teams. For our demonstration, we see the machine gun team leader, armed with a rifle and optic, leading the machine gun team. An assistant gunner, who aids the gunner in crew drills, is armed with a pistol and carrying the tripod. And finally, the gunner, armed with the medium machine gun and spare barrel. Machine guns are vital to a light fighter's combat power. In the offense, machine guns are used most often to suppress the enemy in order to support maneuver. In the defense, destructive fires are emphasized in order to kill the enemy. Two categories exist concerning fighting positions, the above ground position and the below ground position. Fighting positions are further divided by the amount of time, energy, and materials needed to construct them. For example, hasty fighting positions require less time and effort to build, whereas deliberate positions require not only more time and labor, but can also require materials that must be carried or brought to the warrior. Upon halting the team, the team leader's first priority is determining the defensibility of the area. In order to do that, the team leader must identify the three factors for a fighting position in this location. They are that the position must provide protection, the position must allow for enemy engagement, and it must be concealed. As the team leader begins his hasty search, he identifies avenues of approach into the sector, both mounted and dismounted. Additionally, the team leader is looking for any dead space that cannot be engaged with direct fires. Lastly, he considers control measures, such as kill sacks, engagement areas, and single sectors of fire that may be important during the development of an area defense. Next, the team leader calls the team forward to occupy the position. It is important to note that at this step, the position is still tentative. Additional reconnaissance to the front still needed in order to determine if the location is feasible to fight from. Upon occupying the position, the machine gun crew immediately begins the hasty crew drill to establish the firing position. Because the position is tentative, the machine gun remains in the bipod supported position until the site selection is completed. The gun is brought out of assault mode and into a hasty supporting fires mode by linking more rounds to the gunner's starter belt and pre-positioning the spare barrel for action within the gunner's workspace. Next, the team leader must finish his appreciation of ground. To do this, he moves forward enough to analyze the ground for the following factors. 1. Microterrain that creates dead space where the gun cannot engage with direct fires. 2. The height and slope of the ground which will affect grazing fire. 3. The potential routes of ingress that could be used by the enemy to stalk towards the position. and 4. The total frontage that the position can cover. Microterrain is broken down into two categories. Concave features, such as a creek bed or washout, drop below the general slope of the ground. Convex features, such as a mound, rise above the general slope of the ground. Microterrain can also provide the enemy with potential routes of ingress. While improved roads are traditionally considered when analyzing avenues of approach, small depressions and mounds provide ideal cover and concealment for enemy dismounts to approach your position. Ideally, the frontage a force must defend is directly related to its ability to provide mutual support between its adjacent elements. The team leader balances the frontage requirements with survivability of the position when determining how wide a field of fire to give his machine gun team. A narrow field of fire reduces the number of enemy attack angles against the position, while simultaneously making it harder for the enemy to detect the position. Alright, gun team. Yep. We're going to place here. This, 75 degrees, is going to be our primary direction of fire. This will be our 12 o'clock north position. You guys identify? I identify. All right, I In comparison, a wide fire. field of fire enables the machine gun team to place direct fires throughout a larger frontage of an assigned sector. This will allow the machine gun team multiple engagement areas in which they may place fires based on where the enemy main line of attack is formed. Careful determination must be made by the team leader when determining the appropriate fields of fire. In this case, the team leader decides that a narrow field of fire will be best for his gun team, given the advantages of cover and concealment to his flanks. The 
Additionally, he has identified tentative locations for mutually supporting rifle positions that will support a more narrow field of fire. After receiving guidance from the team leader, the assistant gunner begins to bring the machine gun out of the hasty supporting fires roll and moves the gun into the deliberate supporting fires roll. He does this by locking in the tripod legs and generally orienting the tripod to face the team leader's designated principal direction of fire, or PDF. Next, the traverse and elevation bar is locked into place. Additionally, the elevated optical sight is installed if present. Now the tripod is ready to accept the gun. At this time, the gunner will break the ammunition link or quickly conduct an unload drill to make mounting easy. The assistant gunner aids the gunner in the mounting phase by moving the belted ammunition away from the gunner's workspace into his own workspace. In conjunction with the gunner, he also helps lift and position the gun onto the tripod mounting brackets. Mounting the gun into a deliberate tripod supported position takes time. This means that the team leader should stay near the gun to provide local security until the gun is mounted, loaded, and sighted properly. Next, the gunner lays behind the gun to conduct the sighting procedure. In this case, the gunner initially confirms the PDF by looking down the elevated optical sight. This can be recognized by a target reference point or a directional azimuth. Gunner set. Team leader, machine gun set. Assistant gunner, confirm the left limit of fire, 45 degrees. Gunner, 45 degrees, left limit of fire. Confirm 45 degrees. Uh, left limit of fire confirmed. Gunner, confirm right limit of fire, 80 degrees. On most T and E mechanisms, there is a right limiting limit device fire, that allows degrees. the gunner to lock in limits of fire. 80 degrees. Confirm. AG, yeah. prepare the position. Upon the gunner's confirmation of both the PDF, left and right limits of fire, and other specified control measures initially given, the assistant gunner is instructed to prepare the position. The AG begins this phase by tracing an outline around what will be the gun platform. It is important in this step to leave the gun and tripod in place to ascertain the appropriate space needed for both the gunner's and assistant gunner's workspaces. The space protected should allow the crew to load, feed, reload, and change barrels on the machine gun. Next, the assistant gunner moves forward of the position to initially clear the sector of fire of foliage and partial obstruction. It is important to note that the crew member performing this step should not move so far forward that he is out of security or could compromise the position. Additionally, he should only clear enough foliage away to enable the gunner to target and engage the enemy. Any more may compromise the fighting position early. Gunner, reset security. The position is now ready to construct. The machine gun crew dismounts the machine gun back into a bipod supported position off to the side of the dig area. The gunner remains in security covering his assigned sector while the construction takes place. For the remainder of the construction, one member of the crew will always man the machine gun. Often breaks must be taken, so it is advised that the crew switch off working tasks with the gunner as needed. Next, the AG will begin to remove sod from within the position outline. This sod will be used later for camouflaging the position. It is recommended that the crew prepare a poncho or tarp to the rear of the position to aid in the disposal of dirt. This reduces the amount of exposed dirt in and around your position. Once the tarp is filled, the crew moves the soil to a rearward and concealed location. Careful consideration is made to reduce the number of paths used to move back and forth to the position as well as to where the soil is placed. The crew considers aerial threats with disposing of soil. The crew is now well on its way in completing the lion's share of the dig. 
Because this crew has decided on one narrow sector of fire, the team leader has instructed the crew to dig an L-shaped fighting position which will wrap around the outlined firing platform. E-tools are fine in a pinch, but long-handled shovels and matic pickaxes are almost always a welcomed addition to the light fighter's tools when digging in. After digging down to head height and filling sandbags as they go, the light fighters begin to construct the frontal parapet with firing port. To construct the frontal cover and firing port, place sandbags in an overlapping pattern to your front, with at least three sandbags deep. If you do not have enough sandbags for three deep, fill in the rest of the required depth with compacted dirt. This depth will stop medium machine gun rounds. Now it's time to lay the overhead cover support stringers in place. Two long stringers will be placed on the flanks of the position. In addition to supporting the overhead stringers, these beams become the basis of our flank parapet and protection. Next, we build up our flank parapets. This crew is simply backfilling against the stringer support beam instead of using sandbags. It is important that both the parapet flanks, frontal parapet, rear parapet, and overhead cover all have at least 18 inches of earth or dirt between them and the crew. At this time, the assistant gunner moves forward of the fighting position to clear the fields of fire from any remaining obstacles or obscuration that may hinder the gunner's engagement of the engagement area. This step requires the light fighter to use discretion in determining how much vegetation to remove. If the light fighter removes too much vegetation, the area will look unnatural and the enemy will likely determine that there is a fighting position present. Too little and it will become a challenge for the gunner to engage targets. After another round of clearing the fields of fire, the assistant gunner will move back to the fighting position and reconfirm all control measures with the gunner. This gives the machine gun team the chance to adjust both the orientation and the height of the machine gun to clear the firing port. It also gives the gunner and assistant gunner time to situate their respective workspaces. The gunner on the MG3 should have enough room to load, unload, clear, and change the barrel on the machine gun. If possible, a small part of the platform should be kept for the gunner to lean on while in the firing position. The assistant gunner needs enough of the platform space to manage both ammunition and the feeding of the gun, as well as assisting the gunner with loading and unloading drills as needed. The gun team may need to either dig down further or build up using sandbags, the overhead cover stringers, in order to get more height clearance between the gun and the overhead cover. Be careful not to add too much height to the position. Otherwise, this will increase your silhouette. Next, the gun team begins to lay the overhead stringer beams across the stringer support beams laid earlier. These beams will become the skeletal support for the dustproof layer. Dustproof layers should be as rigid as possible, as this material will contain the earth for your overhead cover. This crew is using plywood sheets, but alternate materials may be available to your crew. Materials such as doors or barn wall slats may be taken from nearby buildings or farms in a pinch. You may need to adjust the stringer so that the dustproof layer will not sag. The next step is placing the waterproof material over the dustproof layer. A simple tarp will work in this case. In a pinch, you can connect two USGI ponchos or similar boshes together. Keep in mind, you will likely not get this material back once it's buried. It is recommended to sandbag the corners in order to anchor the waterproof layer while you work to fill in the overhead cover. Overhead cover must be at a minimum 18 inches thick in order to protect against airburst artillery rounds. On average, 18 inches of dirt is approximately four layers of sandbags, or dirt the length of an extended E-tool. Keep in mind that the dirt fill must cover an area that extends to the sandbags used for both the front and rear retaining walls. If the light fighter does not have enough sandbags to completely fill four layers on top of the overhead cover, they may choose to use alternative techniques. 
One technique is to simply outline the overhead cover with sandbags and backfill the interior with 18 inches of dirt. Once complete, the light fighters and place the grass sod that was saved from the start of the digging on top of the overhead cover. Lastly, camouflage is taken from the surrounding area. This last critical step must be done consciously. Vegetation must not be robbed from the front of the position and instead should come from behind if possible so as to blend into the background from the attacker's viewpoint. The light fighter should arrange the camouflage in a sloping pattern so as to conform to the terrain naturally. As the light fighter continues to improve his position, he will likely add in grenade sumps, sloped floors for the drainage, add compartments for rucksacks and or sleeping areas, add in revetments to prevent collapse of the soil, and continuously camouflage the position. The gunner on the MG3 should have enough room to load, unload, clear, and change the barrel on the machine gun. If possible, a small part of the platform should be kept for the gunner to lean on while in the firing position. The assistant gunner needs enough of the platform space to manage both ammunition and the feeding of the gun, as well as assisting the gunner with loading and unloading drills as needed. Creating a sandbag V-shaped firing port reduces the gun's signature from oblique angles. It's also important to note that the gun should be fully recessed into the position. This will further reduce its signature while firing. Light fighters in invisible fighting positions surprise the enemy with effective fire, making enemy supporting fires during an attack difficult to coordinate. Carefully review and practice these skills seen here. Your life may depend on it.